What's going on guys? This is Fadi from Parametric Beam and in this tutorial I will show you how to create a cool daylight analysis such as these photos. In fact this is the simplest way to ensure that you have a sufficient daylight amount in your design space in the early stages of your design process. So without further additions let's dive into Rhino and Grasshopper. As you see here guys, I have a sample model, let's say a sample of office space. It contains uh, of some lab tables that are arranged in a certain way. The model also have a window on the south facade and a door. And also the model contains from uh, some components that are arranged in a layer, layers uh, such as the walls, roof, ceiling glassing and so on uh, so we can control this by turning on and off these layers as you see but we have now to create a geometry or analytical geometry to be determined by grasshopper honeybee and ladybug to perform this uh, simulation so I am going now to draw a geometry. And now we have this geometry. Let's move to grasshopper canvas. In the first step, I will start here by using geometry component in grasshopper so maybe i need to turn uh, off the layers and let's uh, leave the furniture and window uh, layer In the second step, I will convert this geometry to mass using a component that is called Honeybee Mass to Zone. You can double click and search for it or simply you can bring it on from Honeybee toolbar. Yes, here we go. We have now to connect the geometry to zone masses and do not forget to create honeybee zone zones by double click and search for boolean toggle we can connect and turn it on to true let's check now by creating panel by writing double slash or you can simply go to the parameter tab in grasshopper and drag it to the canvas as you see it is a closed brief this means that we are in the right way. Let's move on. The third step is to create the window to the, to, to the geometry because this window is a Rhino component and we have to have a window in our geometry. And as you see here, we have one window on the south elevation of the office space model. And this window have a height of one and a half meter and the, uh, the cell height uh, from the ground floor is one meter. An important thing here to be considered is the glassing ratio because it is important in the uh, daylight factor analysis. And by dividing the area of the window by the area of the wall, which is called window to wall ratio, the glassing ratio is equal to 0 0.5 in our case. So let's see how to do that 
in Grasshopper. In order to create windows to our geometry, I am going to use a component in Honeybee tool that is called Honeybee glassing based on ratio. Let's connect the Honeybee zones to Honeybee objects in the glassing ratio component. Now we have to assign a glassing ratio so I am going to create a number slider with 0.5 value and connect it to the glassing ratio. Also, do not forget here to run it by a true boolean toggle. And assign the glassing ratio, which is 0.5 to south glassing parameter in this component. As we noticed, the windows were created on all of the office space sides, and this is actually not true. So instead of one value of a glassing ratio on all sides, I am going to use a component here in Honeybee that is called Honeybee Glassing Parameter List. and assign the glassing ratio, which is 0.5 to south glassing parameter in this component. As we said before, the window height is 1.5 meter and the cell height is 1 meter. So I will assign these values to the component as well. Maybe we can also control the break up window option by boolean toggle. Now the window with its ratio is created to our geometry. Let's move on. In the fourth step, I am going to decompose the geometry element by using a component that is called Honeybee Decomposed based on type. The reason here that I want to take only the ground floor surface in order to simulate the daylight factor value. The fifth step is to create a grid to simulate the daylight factor. So I am going to use a component that is called Honeybee Generate Test Point. I will connect the ground floors to test geometry. And for the grid size, I will assign a value of 0.5 for the distance from base surface I will assign 0.67 these values were recommended by lead v4 as an average of the test surfaces of the light factor on table level surfaces that the grid surface is below the ground surface but this is not a big deal we can flip the surface upward
In the next step, I will bring a component that is called Honeybee Daylight Factor Simulation. This step is to run the daylight simulation using Honeybee Run Daylight Simulation and I will connect the results in the analysis received to the analysis received in the run component. For honeybee objects, I will go back and bring the last modified honeybee zone and connect it. We have now to run the simulation by using Boolean toggle. After running the simulation, we can notice that there is no graphical representation for the daylight factor results. Simply go to Ladybug and bring a component that is called Recolor Mesh. Connect the daylight factor value to the analysis results and go back to the generate test point component and bring the mesh and connect it. The results appeared in a graphical way. This turned off the preview to see the results. We can now change and play with the bounds of the parameter by using a component that is called Ladybug Legend Parameters. Maybe we have to play with titles. We can change the name of the analysis title and we can change the legend title as well. We can also change the grid size to less than 0.5 for more grid size and more quality.
you can now turn on the building component layers for more realistic graphical representation and yes this is very much for this video thank you for watching please like and share this video for more daily tutorials have a nice day